I was, you know, mom, I, yeah, I had the, me, I had the nerve to tell my mom that, you know, but at the end of the day, Jesus Christ is Lord. I think I just trying to, sh- I was shoving Jesus talk. I was trying to shove it down her. F- my channel my name is yet today so i've asked everybody on my platforms on youtube on instagram on facebook to give me questions that they wanted me to answer so i'm just gonna answer those questions today this video might be a bit long because i've got more questions than i anticipated but <laughs> um, it might it might be two parts i might just do this i might just split it into two have one today and have another one tomorrow i'll see how it goes and yeah i don't want it to be too long so if it's gonna if it's feeling like it's gonna be long i've got it and we'll do like a part two tomorrow so yeah let's get into it first question is hello Tunde. i love watching you i just love your charisma i would love to ask how you maintain creating content on here and also how do you handle your waiting season i have listened to you talk on that here on youtube okay so the first part of the question I think I might have answered that earlier in earlier in the week. Thank you. I really appreciate you. One of the things that I said was consistency, consistency, and um, just keep and just keep going. Sometimes you might feel like the content you're creating, nobody's watching, which I did feel like that. Nobody was engaging or relating with, but you never know. It can just you just if you keep going. If you like, you get inspired by. I get inspired by daily things i get inspired about things that i've been through experiences i've had and sometimes you just need to kind of tap into that but most majorly above all i pray about it i told you guys i pray about everything (laughs) i pray about everything i pray and i still pray about my content and what kind of content i want to create and i believe that god is leading my he's just leading my path and that has been what has settled me and made me feel more at peace of it how do i handle my waiting season not very well <laughs> i did not handle my waiting season very well initially it took me a long time to start enjoying my waiting season i'm assuming you're talking about what and when i was single before i got married that waiting season and um yeah it was because for the longest time i just thought i was going to get married straight out of uni i was like yeah i'm getting married after uni duh like one of my <laughs> one of my really close friends, her sis, elder sister got married fresh out of uni. And I was like, yeah, that's what I want. That's going to be me. I'm going to meet my husband at uni. And then after uni, I'll get married. Didn't happen. And I was confused at all. What was happening? <laughs> and I realized that God was preparing me for the woman that he wanted me to be in marriage. And I wasn't even anywhere near that at 21, which is when I finished uni. So... I thank God I didn't get married then. And also when I, over time, when I realized that I needed to really enjoy my waiting season, it took me a long time to realize that I, I was told it, but I wish I had more examples of it then. I wish that I was encouraged more to enjoy my waiting season because a lot of my friends around me as well were waiting or they're getting married. So I didn't have someone to look to that was like, waiting and really loving it and living life and just you know i didn't really have that person like there were some of my friends like kind of like that but it wasn't it wasn't enough to lift me out of my my constant desire to want to get married but when i finally started traveling that opened my eyes up and i was like hello i can do i can do whatever i want (laughs) why am i why am i just hopping and waiting for this man i'm waiting for this man and whilst I'm waiting, I'm not living the life that God has given me. No. And I feel like 
once I started to enjoy my waiting season and spend more time with God, that really helped me to open up my eyes to the to the beauty of being single and the beauty of waiting. Waiting in a way that you could I could discern who was worth my time and who wasn't. Like although I did trip up because I'm human, but when I was truly like focused on God, yeah, um, it made a difference. That was a long answer. I'm gonna try and keep the rest short because there was a lot of questions. <laughs> Hi, Etende, love your family. Would love to know why you left Nigeria with me, please. Um, I think we shared this actually um, in one of our videos, it might, probably on our couple's channel on the OMGs. I, I think we spoke about why we moved kind of, but I'm just gonna highlight the fact that it was the leading, it was time. Um, it wasn't necessarily um, something that we had planned for a long time. It was something that God made clear to us needed to happen. And um, and I think I was hesitant. All the things I've shared on here, you might, you might find it funny to know that I'm someone that I find change challenging and I don't necessarily like it but i do it because i know i have to and because when god is leading me to i don't have choice i even had a dream about us moving back to to the uk that was a confirmation of what we knew and um so that's really it like you might, you might feel like i'm not saying much but that was it but you know i guess there were other factors as well some that maybe i might share later on um but that was the major factor that was the major reason okay and so this question like three questions in one um i would love to know how you maintain closeness love transparency and respect with family and friends of a different faith without compromising yours how do you deal with different standards i.e dressing for the first part of the question love and transparency i'm very close with my family and i thank god for that i thank god that in spite of the fact that my mum and that my sister my immediate younger sister they're both Muslim and my dad's Muslim. We still are very close. We, um, I speak to them all the time. I just got off the phone with my sister. And I think what has helped me, especially when I first got saved, I was overzealous. I can tell you that for free. I was, you know, mom, I, yeah, I had the, me, I had the nerve to tell my mom that, you know, but at the end of the day, Jesus Christ is Lord. Like I just trying to, sh I was shoving Jesus talk. I was trying to shove it down her throat and obviously, it just, it didn't make for, um, it made for a strained relationship at the time. And even my sister as well, I think, I'm sure I, she must have felt that part of me. And it, you know, it, it was like, I just thank God for my pastor at the time. She had said to me that you need to, you need to less of this and more of this. So less talk and more walk. So more of my evangelism to my family are still Muslim is my life. It's, and it's my decisions in life is what I choose to do. And um, because I believe that my life should be a testimony of who Jesus Christ is. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect. And that's another thing that I, I openly, my family can openly see, um, but before, the fact that I can admit to my imperfections and the fact that, the fact that I, I give all glory to the good things that I do to God I believe that is what enables me to to continue to have a positive relationship with them. When there's differences in like things like oh dressing, and my mom is quite liberal, so to speak. So she, you know she's always she would maybe say things ah this dress is short or something like that. She's not really she's not um she's not really bothered by that. My sister she wears a hijab and you know we don't have any issues it's, it's, it's never been a thing i think as well we respect each other i respect my sisters as much, even though they, as much as they're younger than me my sisters i respect them a lot um and i and i try to ensure that i sh i show them that respect because they respect me greatly they don't call me sister or auntie they call me, they call me by my name which is like oh, in your culture because we're very our age gaps are quite wide but because of how they are toward me you know i love them so much and they love me so much and that is there's a there's a um a respect that comes with that so therefore i respect whatever decision that they have and how they dress and they do mine so yeah 
I said I'm not going to do long answers, of course. How did your family take it when you decided to convert and later marry a Christian? Do you have? Did you have two religious ceremonies? Oh God! Hmm. Make make this quick Q and A not be three part. Hmm. Hmm. It's like it'll be three parts because this question, this answer is a bit long. So the first part: How did my par- my family take it when I decided to convert? I think I shared it in my conversion story. I'll link it down below. Where my they first, my parents are not together. They weren't together at the time. They're still not together. So my so okay. I think I shared it in my conversion story, which I'll link in my in in the description box below. But um, on the Sunday morning, as I was getting ready to go to church, not too long after I had given my life to Christ and started going to church, um, the, the imams and the other clerics from the mosque that I grew up in. I had not seen for years because we had not been going to that mosque for a long time, but they were still like they're still like family because they watched me grow up, um, and <laughs> they were in the living room. It wasn't funny at the time. I was about to go and shower. My mom was like, "Oh, you know, shower." You guys watch the story. I don't want to repeat myself, but it was then I knew how against it my parents were. My dad was there, and my parents aren't together, so that was like, whoa. Daddy's in the living room. What is he doing here? So that was like, and he was like, oh, don't mind that she's on holiday. But again, they thought it was a phase initially. They thought it was a phase. So my mum was very opposed to it at one point. It, it really strained our relationship, actually. Very, like, very much so. It was actually quite a difficult time. And um, I just thank God that we made it through. My mum's older brother, who is a pastor and a Christian, obviously, um, he played a very um, amazing role in bringing me and my mum back together and helping to rebuild our relationship because it was strained. I guess now I can look back and as a mother as well, I can imagine how scary it was for my mum because she wasn't certain, she wasn't sure of what had happened. She's never experienced it before, so it was it was very difficult for her to accept that this was happening to me and. I was now like this or I had, you know, I had basically changed everything about myself and she found it really difficult. But, and and I can imagine, like, and now I get it. But in the same breath, I think that as over time as she has watched me, she has, she can't deny that God's grace has been on my life and, and how much I have thrived since becoming a Christian, how much, how, Perhaps she th- she may feel like, oh, you know, I could have done the same still being a Muslim. But I guess for her, it was that, you know, I was growing, I was I was growing and I, I was doing well. So therefore, what's there to fight? And my husband, when she met him, she liked him. She never had an issue with him being a Christian. But <sighs> there was a little bit of a... Initially, we had wanted to get married in our church and... That wasn't happening because my parents then said and i was surprised my dad because my dad had not had been fine he was like he's not having it he's he's not coming to a church if uh, if we're getting married in the church my mom said the same and i was surprised because i thought that they were over it but apparently they weren't so yeah so i didn't get married in the church we didn't get married in the church we did a blessing which we it didn't even happen on the day of the wedding <laughs> that was another story the blessing didn't happen because time was far spent and the pastor wasn't able to wait um he had another um engagement that was a planned prior engagement so we had the blessing the following week in at the pastor's church and that's what we did yeah so we did our traditional and then we had a party and then we did a blessing a week later which my parents were not around for so but ah, they were around for the most for the main the main part so yeah, but they've never had an issue with my husband being a Christian and because they, they really like him. They love him. My mum loves him off, my dad loves him off, so it's not a problem. Hands be the God. Hallelujah. He also asked, ah, graceful. He really asked this plenty question. What is the job landscape in the UK? What are emerging fields in the UK to make a living? Is going back to school or tra- retraining affordable? First of all, first of first, this is a very broad question. First of first. <laughs> this is a very broad question and i'm not the person to answer these kind of questions thankfully there are great content creators that 
create content based on the job landscape in the UK and all of that kind of stuff regarding the different fields and also because there are so many different fields I'm not sure what field you're interested in and um, as far as I'm concerned I'm not in the job market so I wouldn't have um, a good scope on what it's like I, I just hear from like friends and my family like oh you know it's been like this or whatever but I think that you know do your research and a lot of content creators especially those that have come from abroad come from like Nigeria or different parts of the world they share a lot of that on TikTok and on YouTube as well I think those are great places and probably on Instagram and everywhere else but so it's just kind of having to seek out that kind of content but I can't really speak too much on that and it's going back to school or retraining affordable Afford affordable is relative I don't know what's affordable to you um and I think that by what I will say about that is don't do it just because somebody else did it and it worked do it because you are led <laughs> be led by the spirit don't be led because my um auntie tina did it and auntie, auntie tina did well or auntie bumi did it do it because you are led to do it that's what i'm going to say on that were you brought up as a muslim because of your name fatima i love your dressings thank you yes i was brought up as a muslim and yes fatima is my is my muslim given name and my first name and before i forget the love i love the way you wife and mother i'm learning a lot from you oh thank you hi yetende I just want to know what you think about femininity and the impact of feminism on today's world. Hmm. Ah, okay, that's a big question. I think femininity is important. I think as a woman, it is part of our being. That's something that is a gift that God has given to us. And, you know, I feel like sometimes because the world changes so often, there's, there's times when it tells us to reject our femininity and then accept it and reject it. I believe that you can be a complete woman, um, thriving and be, and be successful and still be feminine. Being feminine is unique to being a female. And yeah, that's how I think about that. And I love being feminine. I love like doing girly things. I, what I consider to be girly things or feminine things. I love, um, I love being a woman. So yeah. And the impact on, of feminism on today's world. I feel like the feminism that is pushed out on social media is rooted in a lot of hate especially towards men and a lot of negativity and it's very much against for me the what the, what the word says but i believe the origin of feminism is important and it's that women should be treated equally that equally can be quite complex because we also have to admit that biologically as women there are certain things that we just can't do that <laughs> that men can and vice versa there's just there's things that men can't men can't do that we can and feminism for me is the fight for women to be seen and to be heard and to be treated as equal to men and i and i believe that is a very important fight i believe that that origin that root is very important and we shouldn't lose sight of that because of the different nuances that we have in this life now and in this society um because there are women that are suffering because they are just because they are women and that's that's not right and that is something that we should continue to fight for feminism is important because we need <laughs> we need to feel supported and feel safe as women in society so yeah hi Itane. please i have been wanting to ask what do you do to relax i love this question what do i do to relax i sleep i um I like to go out for like little cafe trips or yeah coffee shop trips i love that and i eat good food <laughs> i might watch a movie here and there like just watch tv at home watch a movie i don't not much i love reading i'm getting back into reading and i'm so happy about that because i can i can spend hours reading i love it and i love going away <laughs> soft girl trips where I'm just I don't have to worry about food traveling is, is part of like it's relaxation for me because I like to go away and rest a lot um yeah so that's all like that's yeah that's part of my relaxing but day-to-day -day, you know day-to-day -day relaxing you know just resting like sometimes I, I just lay down and read or I just um I, you know yeah I'm watching something on tv or yeah that's really what I'm doing. Nothing, 
out of the ordinary. Nothing too fancy. <laughs> Let me see how long this video is. Okay, guys, this is actually <laughs> turning out to be a really long video. Oh my goodness. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to end this video, this part one here, and I will give you guys part two tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. Bye. I had to be, 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 be